Greetings guys and gals, this is Jabbar bringing you the best in eSports. Today we have StarCraft Brood War Set 7 of the Shinhan Winners League with SK21 versus Wujin Stars. Obviously this is tied up 3-3. Three to three. This is going to be Bisu versus Zero. And yes, I am casting the 7th set of SKT1 versus Wujin Stars. I just casted... Well, not just casted. Earlier this morning, I casted um, Zero versus Fantasy, which was pretty exciting. I believe it was Zero versus Fantasy. Yeah, it was... Maybe. Maybe it was Zero versus... Yes, it was obviously Zero versus Fantasy. I keep getting mixed up uh, Flash versus Bogus because I just casted that game. Also, I've just been doing a ton of casting, but yes, it was Zero versus Fantasy. Zero obviously winning that matchup. Fantasy going for some Wraith play. And Moktira told me, you know, I said I might cast this game, and then once I saw it was Bisu versus Zero, I had to cast it. Plus, Moktira's like, you know what, you need to cast this game, man. He also uh, wanted me to watch Soul Key versus Fantasy as well, because I think maybe Wraiths were uh, in play during that game. Anyways, this is going to be a PvZ on Icarus. Uh, Bisu is going to be spawning at the top right position as the yellow Protoss, and at the bottom left. We have Zero, very good Zerg player, playing for Rujin Stars in red. And I just cannot wait because you know that Beast is probably going to opt for the plus one speed lot rush, which, according to Moktira, hasn't really um, worked out as well as I had actually thought previously. Maybe it's just the games that I'm casting because I am casting like Stork, Cal, and Bisu games. Maybe that it's possible that they're just the ones that implement it uh, successfully and for the other people it just does not work as well. At any rate, Probe is going to get in the base, going to see everything that Zero is doing. Looks like he went for a 12 pool. And so Beast is going to scout this. Probably going to be able, he's probably going to put down the Forge but then the Nexus and then a cannon. Oh wow, actually going for a Nexus. Um, and in that aspect he's definitely going to be okay as the spawning pool is not yet up. Um, so he's going to be able to go Ken uh, Nexus, Forge, probably Nexus, Forge, Cannon, uh, Gateway, just depending on, whoa, and denying the hatchery yet again, Bisu just being so annoying with this probe, doing a very, very good job of denying this hatchery, Zero might have to send out, oh, and even putting down a pile on <laughs> to be super annoying and uh, Zero is going to have to pick up his third expansion rather than pick up his natural or he might opt to go for a uh, base outside of the natural. It looks like Bisu's actually cancelled that pylon after forcing the drone to go up to that northern position. But yeah, so Bisu, uh, his building order just really is going to depend on how many Zerglings he sees. He saw those two Zerglings coming out so he had to put down the cannon first uh, before the gateway. But it's not really going to delay him at all, pretty much, because he did get that Nexus first. He went straight into the Nexus rather than put the Forge up. And we're just seeing so many signs that I that don't really mean anything to me because I can't read Korean. But at any rate, oh, the cannons might be worrying. Justin Kaim does the coach's SKT1 on the left. Wujin Star is on the right. The SKT1 coach just... He just... The same, the same expression, man. He does have a pretty pimp and purple tie there. But it looks like those uh, those Zerglings were deterred at any rate by that cannon. Probably just morphing just in the nick of time. I wish they would show a little bit more of the gameplay. I do like seeing the crowd, though. Um, that's one thing that in my GSL video, the improvement video that I made, uh, I, th I think I said that, that. I actually did not say that. I didn't say that. When you watch the GSL, they only show the uh, players before the match and after the match. They really don't show it in the middle of the match like they do in the Winners League, the OSL, the MSL. They don't show their reactions to different instances, instances in the game. And I think that's very, very important to get kind of um, personalized with the players. I think you can definitely see the emotion on their face. Lair morphing in for zero. And uh, he does have his second and third bases going up as well. Stargate going up for Bisu, so he's going to have some Corsairs out in the near future. Looks like plus one not yet being researched at that forge there. The probe does get in the base, is going to scout this lair. The lair timing is super important when you are a Protoss player playing Zerg. And so he's going to be able to scout that. The top left hatch, and I believe the middle hatch is done. So yeah, he's got those two bases up and running, actually getting a fourth hatch. As natural, that's pretty common. Kind of peculiar placing. Um, I guess not that peculiar because he's going to probably put the hydralist end on the left side of that and then make a little bit more of a wall off. 
for his natural. So he's going to be able to wall it off, probably put a second behind the Hydralis Den, so then he's able to uh, y use the range optimally that way. Probe Scouts the top left base as well. We should see Corsairs in the near future. Spire probably just got put down. Um, there's the Citadel of Dune for the, for the speed for those Zealots. Three Zealots in the mix as well. Another gateway morphing in. This Overlord just kind of chilling on the left side of the base. And he really doesn't need to run in. I mean, for Bisu, this play absolutely standard now. This plus one Zealot Rush. There's the Hydro Den just as I said. On the left-hand side, Spire, about a um, little less than halfway done, maybe two-thirds of the way done. I mean, one-third of the way done. Uh, yeah. Corsair coming in from the right-hand side, probably going to be able to pick off an overlord, but stopping for some odd reason. Really think that he should go in for an overlord. As I always say, it's very, very standard for you to pick off an overlord, and two drones not even doing anything. Uh-oh. Um, those are two drones that could be mining that are not, so that's going to cause zero a little bit, not be too bad. It looks like he, he did pick off that overlord that was sitting over the base there. Going in for the scout um, on the main at the very least. Templar Archives up as well. Four Zerglings at the front for zero, but not really going to be able to do anything. That cannon and the building placement for PC is just way too good. It's going to be able to pick off this overlord at the right. Um, not entirely sure if he was able to actually pick off that overlord at the natural. Probably didn't go for it. Probably just wanted to go for a scout, but he is going to pick off this overlord at the very least and uh, bring the economy of zero down just a little bit. DT out for Bisu, so he's going to have those DTs out. Might be opting for uh, more of a Sarah DD DT build. Usually when we see Sayer DT though, uh, we see an extra Stargate. You can really kind of go without it if you want to, but uh, it's definitely, definitely not recommended. Those Zerglings might have seen the shimmer of those Dark Templar. Don't know if uh, Bisu has attacked any Zerg units with the Dark Templar. Might be going in for a sneak attack of some sort, but there's just so many Overlords in the area and Hydras as well as Scourge that he's really not going to be able to get in there. The, the Overlords do see the Dark Templar, I believe, so now... Oh, man, and getting cut off. Just absolutely awesome um, sandwich, pretty much, there by Zero, able to catch one of the Corsairs. And Zero, man, he always looks like he's, like, really disappointed in himself for some reason. DT's trying to get in the top left base, unable to do so. But, yeah, Zero just always seems like he's, like, disappointed or he's, like, mad at himself for doing something. And he always has that little twitch that he does. Which is interesting because he just did something pretty awesome and then still he's just being weird. Zealot speed and now obviously upgraded. You can see those zealots are moving a lot faster. Um, I kind of wish they would have kept that in StarCraft 2 to be honest. I don't really like the charge as much. The charge is good but it just doesn't seem s too effective just because the zealots are kind of slow uh, to begin with. Usually in StarCraft 1 zealots weren't even that slow but now in StarCraft 2 they are pretty slow. But that's not even what we're talking about. Here comes the Corsairs trying to pick off the Overlords. If they are able to pick off these two Overlords, that's going to be really big. The DT is going to be able to be pretty much unmatched. Here comes Zealots and DTs in the mix as well. This Overlord does get picked off. Uh, Hydra is streaming in to help defend, but it's not going to really matter all that much. They're going to be able to pick off the Zealots, but the DT is going to go virtually unscathed. It would pick off two or three drones in the mix. Is probably going to be able to pick four, five, it looks like five kills on that DT, probably all drone kills. Uh, Beast probably went for all drones on that attack. Don't know if that was economically effective, though, as he did lose a lot of Zealots, as well as one of the DTs, and that other T is, DT is probably going to get picked off as well, so I'm not sure if that was so economically uh, sound, and I'm beginning to wonder if the reason that Moktira told me to watch this was because Bisu's plus one zealot rush, which he didn't even really, or not a rush, a timing attack, didn't work. I'm wondering if that's why he told me to watch this. But it really he did it, he kind of put a little deviation on it. Usually the player doesn't get DTs that quickly, he gets DTs a little bit later. And so I can tell him, you know, this wasn't the true plus one zealot uh, timing attack. Anyways, two overlords going to get cut out in the open. Zero is taking his fourth mining base. 
Um, and he's going to be at six hatcheries, maybe seven hatcheries. He does have three at the top left here, and Bisu is trying to persist with this attack at the top left. I just don't think that's going to be effective. The building placement is way too good. Uh, that Sunken Colony is not going to go down. He is upgrading plus one weapons, so like I said, he doesn't even have plus one weapons at this point in the game. Usually before the player even attacks, he uh, waits for the plus one or he's moving his army in as the plus one is finishing and so this is a little bit different he had to kinda delay the plus one he does have plus one air now the plus one for ground is upgraded but he had to delay that because he went for like two or, or three or four DTs before he went for that attack there is a zergling burrowed there so burrow has been researched by zero I'm gonna stop that expansion for a little while and Bisu really needs to get that expansion up he's a little bit behind since zero is at four bases he did pick off some um, some drones, so that's going to be good for him, and just burrowing right there, and unburrowing right as the uh, zealots pass them. There's a lot of zealots in there. Needs to make sure his high templar don't get picked off. That would be absolutely terrible if his high templar picked off. Trying to do some micro, might be able to get him. Oh my gosh! And the uh, templar are going to get picked off. It looks like trying to storm right there, trying to morph into an archon, unable to do so. The dark, uh, the high templar get picked off. Here comes zealots to that top left base. It looks like absolute slaughter though. I don't think there's enough zealots to really deal with this, but it looks like there might be actually. But uh, these Hydra is probably going to be able to pick that off. There are a lot of Corsairs in the area. I'm assuming that he has two Stargates now. Um, but wow, just way too many Hydralisks. And Bisu's attack is a little bit of a failure. He's just going mass Hydra, which is seemingly very, very good against this uh, zealot push here. He's just going a little bit too late, and that's why they call it a timing attack because if you don't have the perfect timing in a certain amount of food then it's not going to be the most effective attack now Bisu frantically trying to pick off Overlord and Scourge alike and uh, trying to supply cap his opponent so he has to spend more of his larva on Overlords but at the same time he's losing Hydralis unfortunately that top left base very saturated I'm assuming the natural and the main are pretty saturated the fourth base probably not as saturated here comes a ton of zealots uh, trying to pick off these Hydralisks out in the open, these Hydras are very, very vulnerable. Although, uh, behind the buildings and the building placement of Zero, or on this bridge, they won't be able to do so much damage. If he does engage on the bridge, however, these High Templar are going to come in huge, but oh my gosh, these High Templar are going to get picked off, it looks like, yet again. That's going to be absolutely terrible. Here comes more Zealots in the mix, but the High Templar just absolutely dying. Huge mass of Hydralis just streaming in here. Coming in from both sides is Bisu, though. Going to be picking off Hydralis left and right, and this is exactly what I'm talking about. Engaging out in the open field is not what you want to do as a Zerg player with your Hydralis. The Hydralis are just going down, and Zero in a ton of trouble now. Depending on when these eggs morph in, and uh, how... Beast who's able to reinforce with this stream of zealots that's coming in on the minimap. He's also picking off over at the same time, but it's really going to de just depend on the uh, reinforcements coming in. Uh, SKT1 coach having the same expression on his face. He looks like Bisu is at seven or uh, six gateways at this point in the game. He is morphing in lurkers, as we just saw. That fourth base has absolutely no saturation. He's going to be able to take out the Evo Tamer as well as both hatcheries, which is going to be crucial. All, maybe all three hatcheries, which is going to be crucial to his uh, to Zero's macro. More zealots streaming in as well, and Bisu man is just absolutely just persisting with the zealot attack, and it's working. It is working, especially with the corsairs overhead. There are skurs chasing those corsairs. They need to be very very careful not to get lost. There is an observer out as well, so Bisu now has his robotics as well as his observatory, making these lurkers pretty much useless. Uh, unless they're in mass, and Bisu needs to be really careful not to lose those Corsairs. Two Lurkers going down, and uh, these Dragoons might be able to pick off those Scourge. The Scourge just backing away, Bisu looking so calm, man. And Bisu, you know how big of a fanboy I am of Bisu. He is just doing absolutely amazing, picking off three hatcheries already, going to pick off the fourth in the near future, and uh, Zero is going to be at two bases, pumping out Hydra er, p switching tech to Mutalisks. But at this point in the game, Bisu is right on top of that, building his Dragoons. And I'm assuming he's keep uh, he's still building Corsairs as well. Zero looks like he's going straight for Bisu's main. Meanwhile, Bisu has got into his fourth base up at that 1 o'clock position. Bisu's going to try to get in here. He needs more Zealots, I believe, to get into this base. Dragoon's trying to reinforce. Probably should turn some Corsairs around as well to attack. But th this uh, choke right here is just so effective. It takes the Protoss players a lot 
to uh, break it, but Bisu just might have enough units to do so. Drones coming off the line to defend as well. Dragoon's trying to reinforce those Corsairs and defend. Once the Corsairs get in the mix, these uh, Mutalisks are going to have to retreat. And GG coming from zero, so the man, the legend, Bisu, the ninja toss, Bisu, is able to pull out the win for his team, man. If only he played as well in the, in the uh, pro league as he did in the freaking individual leagues, he would win a lot more titles than he has. Uh, not to say that he hasn't won his fair share of MSLs, but he would have he would do a lot better. Bisu obviously visibly happy, and uh, he really should be. I mean, doing a very nice job for his team. Anyways, if you guys like this cast, please subscribe. Please give me a like and uh, comment below. Also, more review and vlog stuff, as well as StarCraft 2 stuff coming your way. And don't worry, I'm not quitting on Brood War, but I just want to make that announcement. And you guys can follow me on Twitter if you want to. It's just the same name, XI Jabberwock IX. Lates.